Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to my Linux Essential series. In today's video, we're going to go over the grep command. Now, this is a command that you've no doubt seen all over the place because it's very rare that I see a single tutorial that doesn't include the grep command at least once. It's a very popular command, so it's definitely something that we'll need to check out in the series. But there's more to this command than what you normally see when you look up a tutorial, so there's some examples I definitely want to show you. But before we get into that, I want to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. And Linode has been a sponsor of Learn Linux TV for longer than I can remember, and they're a great fit. They're a Linux-focused cloud server provider, and well, this is a Linux-focused YouTube channel, so it all works out. You could use their platform to quickly and easily spin up your very own Linux server, and you could use that server for all kinds of different things, like setting up your own VPN server, perhaps you want to start a blog, set up Nextcloud, there's all kinds of different things that you can create on their platform. And since it's Linux-based, you could choose your favorite distribution. They have all kinds from CentOS to Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, and so on. They have a lot of different choices there. And once you get your very own server, who knows what you might build. And even if you don't have a use case in mind, you could spin up a server to simply use as a test server while going through any of the tutorial videos that are available on Learn Linux TV. If you don't already have your own account, you could create one with the URL that you see on the screen right now, and that'll give you $100 in credit that you can use to do all kinds of Linux-related activities, and that credit is good for up to 60 days, so there's all kinds of Linux that you could fit within that credit. Thank you so much to Linode for your continued sponsorship of Learn Linux TV. I really appreciate it. And now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the grep command. So, what exactly is grep? Well, grep stands for Global Regular Expression Print, and although regular expressions are supported, that's not something that we're going to go over in this particular video. But the whole purpose of grep is to search for text within files. So what I'm going to do right now is give you an example of the grep command in the same style that you normally see if you were to see it within a tutorial. So what I'm going to do is use the cat command to display the contents of a file. And if you're already thinking this might be a bit redundant, you're right, but we'll get to that. I'm going to use as an example the ssh config file, which is this file right here, and it's quite long actually. So just to give you an example, we have 33 lines within that file. So in my case, it's not the biggest config file. I actually trimmed mine down so it only has the config that I need. That's a whole nother video. But we have 33 lines of text to look through here. So if I'm looking for a specific thing, it would be great if I could just find that specific thing. And that's one of the things that the grep command helps us achieve. So if I recall that command and instead of piping it to the word count command, I'll instead pipe it into grep. And what I want to search for is port with a capital P. And there it is. This particular server right here is using the default port of port 22 for SSH. Now, the file that you look through doesn't really matter. I'm going to give you an example file in this video anyway, but I use the SSH config file as an example because it's something that we edit quite often. In this example, I use the cat command to print the entire contents of the file, but instead of showing the contents to the screen, I piped that command into the grep command, and I grepped for port. So I guess you could say grep is also a verb in addition to a command. Now another trick we could do is we could actually reverse this output by typing dash v as an option. And with quite a few commands in Linux, the dash v is for verbose, but when it comes to grep, dash v means something else. Let's see what happens. So what did happen is that it printed every line that did not contain port. So the first example, we're looking for a line that contains port. We're grepping for port, as you see here. But the dash V option is an exclusion. So if you include dash V, it's going to give you every line that doesn't contain that particular term. It's perfectly valid to use the cat command to cat the contents of a file and then pipe that into grep to search for a particular word. But that is a bit redundant. Check this out. I'm not going to pipe something into grep. I'm just going to use grep by itself. I want to search for the word port, and the file that I want to search in is slash etsy 
slash ssh, sshd config. And this is the same file that we were searching in earlier. I'll press enter. And it does the exact same thing as this example right here, but it's shorter. So like I mentioned, there's nothing wrong with using the cat command and piping it into grep, but you don't have to do that. Grep is able to search within files by itself. It doesn't need the help of cat or any other command. This is what grep does. So using the cat command and then piping that into grep, that is redundant because grep is able to search within files by itself. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. And what I'll do is I'll build your knowledge of the grep command and give you a more well-rounded look at the command. And to facilitate that, I've created a text file off camera. I called it characters.txt. And as you can see here, every line is a different character in some sort of fandom. You have characters from Ninja Turtles, we have superheroes here, a couple villains, you get the idea. Now this is just a random file that I created to serve as the example within this video. And I'll make sure to have this text file available in the blog post for this particular video. The link will be in the description. But again, it doesn't matter what text file you use, grep can search through any text file. So let's have some fun. What I'm going to do is use the grep command. And what I want to do is show every line from that file where the species is turtle. So I'll use turtle as the keyword here. And characters.txt is the file that I want the grep command to look in. And if I press enter, you can see that I have four lines here. We have the species of mutant turtle. So I use the word turtle as my search term. And on your end, it might not color code the output here. That's a shell customization that I've implemented. But anyway, as you can see, the grep command worked. It searched through the characters.txt file. I was searching for specifically the word turtle. And it printed every line that contains that word. Now I know this example isn't very practical, but this is just an example, so we'll just go along with it for now. Similarly, I could change the search word and search for something else. And then we have the human characters right there. And as I mentioned earlier, if I use dash V, then it's going to show me every line that does not include that search term. And those are probably the two most important examples of the grep command. But actually, there's more. There's more that we can do with the command, so let's see some additional examples. So I'm recalling this command right here, and what I'm going to do is add the dash n option to the grep command, and let's see what happens. Now, as you can see here, I have line numbers on the left-hand side. So this is really useful because the grep command is actually able to give me the line number that the search term was found in. So lines 1, 2, 6, 11, and 12 all contain the word human. In addition to that, we have the dash C option. And what do you think this is going to do? Well, let's press enter and find out. If I add the dash C option, it gives us the count, the number of times that that word appears in the file, but it doesn't actually show the lines themselves, just the number of times that particular search term was found in the file. Now by default, grep is actually case sensitive. So if I search for human in lowercase, it's not going to find anything because I don't actually have that term with an uppercase H within that file. So what we can do instead is add the dash I option. And what that allows us to do is not care about case sensitivity. And as you can see, it works. Human with a capital H is a match. Even though we didn't type a capital H, it was still able to match it. That's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do right now is switch gears away from the characters file. I mean, it was really fun, but I want to show you some more practical examples that mirror some real world scenarios, and maybe that'll help commit the grep command to memory. So what I'm going to do, and it's okay that you're not able to follow along with this because you're not going to have the same files that I have on my file system. You can just watch and take notes. That's totally fine. Or you could just adjust the examples to fit files that you do have. But in my case, I have a git directory. Inside there, I have a personal directory. And this means that these are git files that are not actually uploaded anywhere. They're only stored here locally. And I have a local Ansible repository. And don't worry so much about Ansible. I have an entire series about Ansible if you want to learn it. But you don't have to understand the syntax of the files that I'm about to look through in order to understand exactly what I'm doing. Inside Ansible, I have a roles directory. And there I have workstation, then tasks, desktop environments, and then GNOME. 
I actually use Ansible to set up all of my computers. Long story. Anyway, let's go in there. And we have some YAML files. So what I'm going to do is use grep. The keyword that I want to search for is gedit. That's the default text editor for the GNOME desktop. It's going to be switching to a different text editor here very soon with the next version. So perhaps I want to find every occurrence of gedit and replace it to the new text editor that's coming. So that might be one reason why I might want to search for this particular keyword. But anyway, what I'm going to do instead of giving it a file is just tell it to look through every file. And that's what a star does. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, I have several files right here that include the word gedit. And as we saw earlier, I could use dash n to show me the line numbers. That's very useful. So we can see we have matches on line 1, 5, 159, and 9. We see those numbers right here. So let's just say, for example, that I want to search for a particular term. I don't know what file that term might be in. And maybe I don't even know what directory that term might be in. So is there a way that I could use the grep command to recursively search through files? Well, yeah. I mean, if there wasn't, why would I even bring it up? So grep-r is one of my favorite variations of the grep command because that lets you do exactly what I just said. It allows you to recursively search through files, even through directories, to find your match. So what we'll do is we'll use grep-r, and maybe I want to search for gedit. I want to know if this term is in any other file, even a file outside the directory that I was in earlier. And then after that, we type the path where we want to start the search from. And the closer you can get, the better. It doesn't really matter. I could actually start the search from right here. But I have a bunch of files in my home directory. So if you can narrow this down, it's better. You don't have to be exact. But I know that anything I'm interested in will be in my git directory. And I know that I've only used gedit within the roles directory. So I think that's good enough. So grep-r, search term and then the directory that you want to start your search from. Let's see what happens. So it looks like this particular command is providing value to me because I know that there's other occurrences of gedit outside the directory that I was in, and I found that out by using grep-r. Another example we might use is grep-r. Maybe we want to search through log files, so I'll go through slash var slash log, and the search term that I want to search for is error, and what I'm going to do is add the dash i option to that as well, because I don't know if the E is going to be capital in any errors that might exist or what might be there. So I'm just going to use this variation of grep right here, R for recursive, I for case insensitive, search term error, and then bar log is where I want to start my search from. So I want to see all the errors. Let's see what happens. And as you can see, I have a number of matches right here. I see the word error in red. And again, it's only red in my case because of a shell customization, but the command did work. We have errors listed here. And if this was a server that actually was used for something more important, this one isn't really the most important server in the world, then maybe I might actually have some more relevant results. But as you can see, the grep command is very useful. As for the examples we've used, you've seen that we can use the cat command to cat the contents of a file. We could pipe that into grep and then search for a particular term. That's probably the most common way that people seem to use the grep command, and I'm one of them. It's muscle memory for me nowadays. But actually, all you have to do is grep for a term, and then the path to a file. If you don't know the file, then of course you can use dash r, just like that, to search for every file underneath a folder for a particular term. And that's also a perfectly valid way to use grep. So there you go. The grep command is very easy to get started with, and in this video, we've gone over the basics, so I hope it helped you out. If this video did help you out, please click that like button, because that lets YouTube know that other people might benefit from this content as well, and I would really appreciate that. I have other episodes in this series coming very soon, so make sure that you subscribe so you'll be the first to see those when I do have those uploaded. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching.